Oh, look at how cool we have all these uh, ant cutters at work and they're really like on the beds check it out check it out they're literally ant cutters everywhere here right like literally even on the bed literally on the bed see the action forget about sustainability you want to enrich ecosystems every bean is equipped to live a positive energetic balance keep it pruned we are cultivating abundance. Not a problem to cut down trees. The problem is not planting them. Hey, what's up Agro Forestry Academy? We're back here in Situ the Jazz with another video on our Napier grass system. Uh, last year, still in the rainy season, we planted this system and it was really abundant for us. We harvested, you know, uh, a lot of veg initially to establish the system and then you know we had the legacy of the grass and we harvested pretty much quite a lot of grass uh, well we were definitely going into the dry season now we're not burying the dry season we're actually in it already um, I know we're going to need more grass so I'm expanding on this uh, over to the other side Let's quickly show you so we're expanding over there we're going to do them as we can, you know, it's going to be just a three, uh, three bed uh, at a time, you know, because we're using the manure we had. Why only three beds? Because we had three beds worth of manure. We've got three beds worth of, you know, uh, shredded wood from the barn. So it's just the sustainable way. So it's, as, it's, as, it's as much as we can at the moment. So what we've done here, because we've harvested a lot of napier grass here, um, I was letting them you know shoot up so I could harvest some seeds ideally I would have wanted to do you know the whole block here but uh, you know like I said there wasn't enough uh, resources to do the whole block so what I've chosen to do is to get you know the whole cubic you know harvest worth of this napier grass and just layer it down on the corridors of where these these uh these, these shoots are coming up from which is now the corridor but in the past it was the bed so this was the vegetable bed and uh, how we had it we had the vegetable bed and we had the napier grass on either side so right now because you know we had it on either side on all beds they've kind of come really close and what was the vegetable bed has become the corridor and what was the corridor has become like a, a thick layer of double uh, napier grass that's really cool so I mean this is really valuable product here for me there's a lot of leafage information there's a lot of protein there's a lot of fiber a lot of biomass that could have gone for animal feed but I've laid it all down always thinking of being better prepared when we hit the height of the drought right now is not the drama at the moment I go to my neighbor's house I cut some grass there I'm cutting you know around around the farm and other places but you know where I'm gonna need it most is at the height of the drought so everything I've been doing in all my systems is preparing for you know August early September when everything is finished so at the moment I'm cutting everything back I'm making everything more re resilient to the drought so I've actually fed back you know so much cubic meter worth of you know this napier grass to the ground it's just intelligent you know every three cuts leave one behind just so you can be sustainable at the at the bottom there I was able to to keep true to you know when I cut the napier grass, bring back the cow manure and the horse manure to keep the cycle going. At the top here, I was unable to do that. I didn't have enough at the time. So it's especially critical for me to give back uh, to the soil here. We've got a few things. We've got a few prickly pears here. You can see one. But what I've done, I've actually buried most of them. They're just basically underneath, you know. So they're going to be re-sprouting. They're going to be feeding the soil, humidity, whatever. But it's down there, it's feeding back. Okay, we've got a few cassavas and things that, that did pop through and that do uh, maintain, did maintain themselves in the system. My idea here now is to plant some black velvet beans, you know, just to give it that feed. To give it, I could, I could also harvest that for animal feed, uh, the leaves before they produce the beans. Uh, or I can choose, you know, to, to feed back the system with the black velvet beans. So right now I'm going to be introducing the black velvet beans underneath this grass. Just open up a little hole. 
and I'm going to be pulling the irrigation. We started organizing the irrigation, we started ripping out all the drip tapes so we can reorganize them and lay them down carefully. Uh, so let's wait till we progress a bit and then we can talk about, you know, what we're going to do on those three beds and any development on this. We've also got the fact, you know, of these big eucalyptus here nearby. As you can see, you might remember those videos with those double canopy eucalyptus. Yeah, real, a lot of organic matter there. It's time to come back and prune that again. Are serious monsters. Um, but it's great. It's really kept the system booming. I had a nice coffee harvest here this year. And again, I've never manured this area, not even when I planted it back in the day. I used a bit of horse manure, but you know, I don't even consider that as, you know, proper uh, nutritious. Just, it's got a nice information, a lot of organic matter and fibers and things like that. But I mean, we just threw a little bit of horse manure and planted it with the processes, through Mexican sunflowers and things like that. And the eucalyptus have been feeding the system and the coffees have turned out great. It takes longer, but we get there. Uh, so what's happening here you see just about the sun all over but as the sun moves along it's got a shade and these eucalyptus are going to provoke shade all the way to halfway through that system there so another task right now is to bring that all down so we're going to bring skeleton this eucalyptus off i'm going to show you a photo of what it's looking like in the afternoon when it's all shaded off so it's irrigation light organic matter on the ground some nitrogen fixing beans and uh, let's go again with the napier grass all right so now we can see the shade it's not a picture like i said we've started you know pruning some of these we haven't got round we've already done the first row there are four rows you know in depth of this so you can see in the afternoon where the shade comes in so it's important we bring this down it's good that it forces us to feed back the system and keep keep the pruning up to date and uh, you know, when the sunlight comes in, well, you've seen it by up to midday, one in the afternoon, there is sunlight. So there is sunlight coming in. We've got to get more of that going on all day long so that can boom. And now we've brought down more of that. We've just left a, a couple of lines there where I might need some seedlings in the nearby future. And uh, yeah, so, you know, I was just speaking about putting, giving all of this back. And uh, now it's actually, 10 days later from from what we've just been looking at a second ago and uh you know before i go ahead and show you this set of rows here of this new plantation check out the message so guys just very quickly if you haven't subscribed go ahead and do that now all right it's free make that button gray and make my day follow us and be the first to know when the new content's out and if you appreciate this video smash that like button and help us reach more people so others can too learn about agroforestry. And without any further ado, let's get rolling with today's content. All right, so we've got it going on over here where we're planting, expanding our Napier grass system. Uh, we've actually managed to set up five of these rows, you know, just sustainable as we do, as we can. Uh, yeah, all on the drip irrigation. Here we've got the Napier grass, you know, by the edges. We've done the video showing how to plant it. It's all gonna be, you know, you watch it till the end and then it will suggest you that video there where, you know, with these, all these, how to, how to plant these seedlings. I'm not gonna go through it because we've got extensive videos explaining this exact system. Um, I'll just talk about, you know, the difference on this, the, the, the consortium difference between this and the last time I planted it. It's not like uh, something that I learned and I've changed, I just, it's just different because of the time, what's available, what are my needs, what are my urgencies. So, um, well, here we've left the corridors much wider than before. I did appreciate how it worked out last time. Like we were just saying, uh, this corridor was so tight that now it's one big, you know, Napier grass row. They've joined up together. Here it's a bit further apart and what I'm actually going to do when I get around to it probably in the rain season I'm not going to actually uh, bring a, a irrigation tape here in the rain season I'm going to you know uh, soften this soil and plant some 
Mexican sunflowers because I'm really interested in, in keeping the system booming, feeding itself. So I've left the corridors a little bit wider so that I can actually introduce the Mexican sunflowers solely to feed the system. So the Mexican sunflowers will be chop and drop, chop and drop on the regular, you know, meter and a half max, I'll let them grow to. So it won't interrupt, you know, it won't be shading out the napier grass. All right, added to that, like this time, this consortium was very focused on that, on feeding back the system. So uh, I planted uh, the black velvet beans everywhere, basically, uh, every 40 centimeters on all of these rows. When I say all of them, the first three I've done the black velvet. The fourth one here, I went with the pork pig, pork beans, just to mix it up a little bit. But I do want to be a little bit more aggressive than that. I do want the black velvet beans. Added to that, uh, the black velvet beans, the cows do have a tendency to eat rather than the pork beans. So is a second function for it. Like like the Mexican sunflowers here, you know, if ever need be, I can explore the system. You know, the cows do eat the Mexican sunflowers. So everything I'm planting to feed back is also optional. You know, has if ever a crisis, you know, on that day I need to really and things like that, all right. Uh, this final one here, I haven't stretched the irrigation yet. It's just ready on the spot. <laughs> Check this out, this is crazy, man. This is all the chicken bedding, like from the, from our mobile chicken coop, you know, for the 400 chicken where we put the shredded wood in there and you know, the bed is the shredded wood and I was scraped it out. And I tell you, there's some serious amount of chicken manure here <laughs> as, you know, as part of the material that covers the soil. Ideally, you know, the chicken manure, I have it as manure, you know, I have it to incorporate in the soil and to feed back. But this is the kind of wood chipping I had. I had the wood chipping mixed with the chicken manure. With this drip irrigation, I'm, I'm guessing it's not going to do much at the moment, but when it rains, you know, it's really going to sink in that extra nitrogen and it's just fabulous. But talk about, you know, not composting so yeah, i know a lot of you are going to be on that uh telling me no and this and that and we've spoken about it in the past about you know uh energetically i just don't think it adds up you know with all the energy that you need to spend to compost it we we appreciate you know uh the process happening on the spot all right so this can compost on the spot it's the process which is enriching not the result i don't want to compost it elsewhere and bring the result i want to do it on the spot and have that process transform the soil that was here you know with everything together uh building life together so we it's a process that's enriching really so i'm not too concerned about that and uh yeah just to touch up on the black velvet beans i used to be so afraid of those i mean because when i you know when i started up and i bought this farm we had you know we had uh, all these fruit trees that were here from before and it had a good story someone had lived here for 20 years and he was organic and everything but then he sold it to one guy and this guy was here for one year and he didn't manage anything and these black velvet beans took these trees and really swallowed and bought everything down and really kind of killed a lot of things that were going on a lot of the citrus and things like that so the orchid was really damaged and i bought this and i you know i was from the city and i was like right this thing's killing everything so from day one it was public enemy like main you know city of the jazz enemy number one was the black velvet beans and then i understood you know all right they're cool but not here and then but still i was like yeah they're cool but not here you know anywhere else but here and i was like that for a couple of years just avoiding the black velvet beans and then uh, Felipe convinced me, like, let's do it, man. Let's just do it here. We're in the process that we're actually trying to eliminate this uh, Bermuda grass. And uh, yeah, it was great. So the black velvet beans uh, in consortium with planting Mombasa. So the Mombasa and black velvet was enough to get rid of that uh, Bermuda grass that was unwanted at that time at that plot. So that was all right. Okay, so we can work with black velvet if we manage it properly. And it's just come to the point where now I just love it so when you learn to manage it because everything that is scary and everything that is abundant and it is you know overwhelming uh it needs management but that's you know what more i mean would you rather buy the manure would you rather plant the manure is it a problem that you have so much energy uh available for free and but at, at a cost of of managing it you know 
So I'm really excited about black velvet beans every day more. Um, recently I've been, you know, excited about pork beans, but now just in this system here, I've gone with the black velvet because I really want, I really want it to take over. I want a lot of biomass. I don't think it's good. It's not going to shade out the napier grass. You know, the napier grass is going to stick right through, you know, the ice popping out. And it just makes, I just got to make sure I've got to manage it at the right time. And if you plant it in line, anytime you want to remove it, you know, it's every 40 centimeters. You know, if it's unorganized, then it's a real problem for you to eliminate it, for you to prune it down. Um, but if you plant it in line, you know, you just walk on that line and you clip, 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 and that's it, it's gone. All right, you let it seed if you want to let it seed. So I really want to create a bit of havoc here with this black velvet. Uh, tomatoes, just thin line of tomatoes in the center. Obviously here I could have planted a lot of things. I could have planted, you know, uh, lettuces and I, and I did plant rocket in one of these beds, but it's not popped out yet. But I have got the rocket planted. That's the baby there. So you see, I've planted rocket in the border all right i haven't planted it all the way because you know 500 meters of rocket what am i going to do with that so i just planted a little bit here obviously i could have filled in with so much other veg like lettuce and everything it's just a little bit of the priority a little bit of the need a little bit of you know the labor so i've, I've gone ahead i've planted some towards the end there i've planted some courgettes because i just love the simplicity and the time of year now as well and the drought uh, with the drip irrigation the courgette comes really well and it's just real quick and fast and it removes itself from the system real quick and fast that's what i love about the courgettes and those initial napier grass systems are planted i also planted the courgettes um they come and they go real fast they don't stick around they're not going to create much havoc they're just going to help me shade off a little bit of the weed together look at these tomatoes i mean they're planted every like it's supposed to be 20 centimeters but we're extra density this is like 15 you know just a thin line of 15 and they're all gonna be crawling tomatoes they were just you know really obviously you know tomato harvest time drip irrigation is gonna love it um but also you know just creating that havoc shading off the weed all right covering that soil uh the tendency you know see it there we, we cover it really well but you know off the edges it tends to fall off real quick no time we've done a real good job here where it hasn't fallen off real quick but you know the tendency is that we lose you know some of that off the edges there and then we're gonna have all this havoc covering the soil there just giving us the backup um the courgettes haven't sprouted yet i was just looking for that because they were planted by seed yeah but they haven't sprouted yet uh, that would have been like a little dent where i planted it oh, look at how cool we have all these uh, ant cutters at work and they're really like on the beds check it out check it out they're literally ant cutters everywhere here right like literally even on the bed literally on the bed see the action now they're working the shredded wood they're not cutting down my tomatoes and they do appreciate tomatoes and cutters but they're working all that organic matter it's incredible how the ant, ant cutters they're working the organic matter and what i actually done just to be cool with them i actually fed them a little a little thing or two i chopped down i pruned back a bit of citrus and uh here's some say eucalyptus branches which they've they've made a feast of the leafage so i just went there i pruned down a few branches some eucalyptus and some citruses and I fed them, I fed the ants. I was like, look, just be cool, man. If you want to eat some green, I'll give you some fresh green, some eucalyptus and some and some citrus. And if you want, just work that shredded wood, that organic material on the floor. Go ahead, there's plenty for everyone. So, you know, immediately, or, you know, my housekeepers, they're like, yeah, you're going to have to bring in the poison, the medicine, whatever. You're going to have to bring in all that stuff, the ant killing equipment. I said, listen, let's, let's give it a go. Let's see how it goes. You know, so that's it. They're working all that organic matter. And then added to that, I gave them a little feast. But obviously, that, that didn't keep them, you know, fed for too long. But they're working all that organic matter. I'm really chuffed how we chose to give a chance to the life around the soil without first 
killing it and it's not bothered me one one bit it's worked out really well um so this is the shredded wood that was in the chicken barn and uh but all the others they were from the horse barn like the usual here in situ the jazz the shredded wood goes into the horse barn and you know and the horse manure is not so aggressive like the chicken really nice for covering premium we always talk about that so on this case here what i've done i used the horse manure all the way in the center where the tomatoes are going to be and the chicken manure actually the chicken shredded materials all on the borders just because we had it and it's just make good use of it put it on the borders there and i'm sure that when it rains well that should be quite potent all right guys so i appreciate again you guys giving me the time being here to see what is up in situ the jazz stick around with us if any of you guys want some one-on-one -on -one consultations anything like that reach out to us we've got the, the patreon program as well from 790 a month where you guys can you know hang out with us you know every month we have a, the q a and uh you know on the interaction there so and it's a way to support us right we've been doing this for three years and it's it's really helped out you know those of you which are there for the 790 it really has helped us to keep on going all right so we appreciate you being with us from the agroforest academy crew this one's you